My friend Tom is such a crazy sock knitter that we call him the Sockinator. He has a wonderful loom knitting group on Facebook called Socks a la Loom in which he is leading a knit along. To make sure that we have enough support materials for new sock knitters, I'm adding to my Sockumentaries list. All of the Sockumentaries will be useful to you, but the ones that begin with this intro are specifically designed to help with Tom's knit along. I'm ready to do my sock heel. That's enough top for me. A sock heel is normally done on half of the pegs. So this is my peg number one. There are 32 pegs in all. So I will work over here to peg number 16. Let's double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I know that's not exactly centered on the loom because I started on the side of the loom, but it will be okay, you will see. So for the very first row of the sock heel, I just knit all 16 of those pegs, the stitches on the pegs, and ignore the remainder of them. And while I knit these, because this is easy and you understand what's going on, I'm going to tell you a little bit about sock heels and about what I'm going to do here. First of all, this is called short rowing. Every row that we knit gets shorter and shorter. I have other videos showing the entire heel process. They are on kiss looms mostly, and I know that some of you find them harder to look at. So we're going to do a little bit on this loom, but probably not every stitch in the whole heel. My 16 are knitted. That was peg 16. I'm going to wrap and start back. Now, about that wrap. Some people lift the stitch off the peg, wrap beneath, and then replace the stitch. It looks a little bit different on the finished sock heel when you do that. I don't find it to be a necessary thing to me, and this is easier. Um, as I've stated before, I do not think your choice of knitting style is a moral issue. Do the one that works for you that you like. The knitting police um, are very inactive. They are not going to know. Okay. I knitted 16 that row. Now, I would knit 16 again if I knitted this peg, but we want the short row. So instead of knitting it, sorry about that, I had to get some yarn. I'm going to knit the 15th stitch, wrap the 16th, and begin going back the other direction. You might have noticed me taking a shortcut way of making my um, U-stitches. And you might say to yourself, those ain't U-stitches, but they are. Watch. Up, over, exaggerated, pull, and it wraps around. If you can get comfortable with this, it's speedier than wrapping one peg at a time. But as with all knitting things, do what works for you and what you enjoy doing. So this row is only 15 stitches long. Actually, the last row was 15 stitches long. This is the third row, and it should be 14 stitches long. From this point on, it's very, very easy to figure out where you are. This peg was wrapped. Whoops, that's in your way. This peg was wrapped, not knitted, last time. So this time, it should be the peg next to it. And then we go back. So we have knitted 16, 15, and 14. This row will be a 13 peg row. Now the result of all this short rowing is to make that famous heel shape. We're forming a pocket of knitting into which your heel will fit. There is a surprise here, and that is that the toe, which does not look much like the heel, is knitted in the identical manner, and it comes out the same. Last stitch to knit, stitch to wrap, 
It's next to the previous wrap. Now your pattern, whatever you are using, will tell you how long the short rowing should continue. For those of you who are using my Socks of All Sorts for Loom Knitters book, it's there in a giant chart to make it very, very easy for you so that whatever gauge and size you're knitting on, you'll get the right proportion. When figuring out how the short rowing should work, there are some refinements if you're going to do it mathematically. We wrapped this one last time, so we wrap but don't knit the peg next to it. It's easiest if your, um, your short rows start on a number of pegs that is a multiple of four. It's absolutely essential that it be a multiple of two. And I'm not going to bother to explain why here. It just works better mathematically. So every row is getting shorter. And since we started at the top and covered my ankle, we're now going down the back of my heel, heading for the floor. Wrap. Oh, yes, I should tell you, you can either wrap this direction or this direction. I personally don't really care which way. However, they do look a little bit different, so I would suggest that you choose one and be consistent. Let's get that tucked in. I think that you've probably seen enough to get the idea of what we're going to do. So I may go off camera and finish short rowing in and join you when it's time to short row out. I'm going this row to knit these three more stitches, wrap this one, then go back the other way and keep going. See you in a minute. I have knitted my shortest row and it's easy to tell what was knitted. One, two, three three, four. You know this one wasn't knitted because it has two wraps and having knitted this one I'm about to wrap this one so it wasn't knitted. Now we reverse the process. What we just did is called short rowing in. Now we're going to short row out which is a shorthand way of saying that every row gets longer by one stitch. There are my four. Now we're also going to knit this peg. And both of the stitches that are on, actually one's a stitch and one's a loop, get knitted over at the same time. Now it's your choice whether to wrap the next peg on the way out, short rowing out that is, or not. In my opinion, it's a little sturdier at this gauge if I do and less likely to create any kind of hole. The wrapping is specifically to pre prevent the formation of holes, which will happen when you short row if you do not wrap. And in this gauge, these are boot sock suitable or slipper sock suitable. So I definitely think sturdy is good. Get both of these over. These first two rows are a little bit atypical because all the other rows, if you do wrap on the way out, you will have three wraps to knit over. I'll show you as we return. Here's our first working stitch. This now has three wraps because I just wrapped it. Oops. Knit across. This is because we're getting a little build up of the pocket that the heel is in there, so pulling down will help prevent that popping off that the stitches want to do. And now we have three loops on this one, plus the new wrap, so all three go over. In the same operation, but you don't have to do it at the exact same minute. And wrap. And again, I'm going to go back and forth knitting all these adding this one, wrapping this one, 
knitting all these, adding this one, wrapping this one. I'll see you when I've got them all back to work. Almost finished with the heel. I'm down to the last row and I want to show you something. This is the last peg on this end that has multiple wraps and was involved with the heel. So we still need to knit off those stitches. Well, those wraps on that one stitch. This is the corresponding stitch on the other end. And I've just knitted up to it. So I'm going to knit all of those three over. And now we still want to prevent the formation of holes where the rows go back and forth. So we're going to wrap this peg. And on the next full circuit of the sock, that peg will get knitted off. So as soon as we finish this last piece of the heel, we'll be ready to resume knitting completely around. And here I am. There's the peg that I wrapped to begin this final row. We're around to the very last stitch in the heel. We'll knit them all over. And now we can go round and round and knit the foot, but I want to point out a couple things first. There's an extra wrap on here, and we just knit it over. This is that very first peg that I wrapped, when in this case I knitted on 16 pegs. So we'll wrap it normally. And now normal knitting resumes as we go round and round the length of the foot. With one exception, you'll have two wraps to knit over here because we wrapped at the beginning of this row. Now, for the foot length, you cannot wing it. There are a couple of ways to decide how many, length, how many rows you need for the length of the foot. It's simply knitting around and around and around whatever loom you have, but you must be precise because there's nothing worse than socks that fit poorly. Knowing your gauge has a lot to do with it. I show you two ways in the books, in the book Socks of All Sorts for Loom Knitters to figure out how long to knit the foot. And then you go into knitting the toe, which is the identical process we just made. And if you look in here, you can sort of picture how it would work because there is a real pouch forming. Where I'm sticking my tool now is the main part of the sock. I can see it coming out the bottom here. So that's just the tube of the sock. But this is the heel pouch. That might be a better way to see it. Let me see. There you go. There's the heel pouch. And of course it will assume it's more normal heel shape as soon as it's not stretched widthwise as it is here. That kind of helps me envision how can it make a toe. And there's another video on that.